Hi, everybody. I recorded this webinar for CPA Academy, which is an amazing platform for accountants to get their CPE credits by watching free webinars. I'm going to put a link in the description to the CPA Academy uh, website and the actual, the actual course. So if you're an accountant, you can actually uh, register to CPA Academy and even get CPE for watching this uh, content. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Perfect. Well, Hi everybody, my name is Hector Garcia and I will be doing ChatGPT for accountants, how we can use AI to gain next level efficiencies. Now, I wanna make sure you can see my screen. Yes, you can, okay. Um, I'm an I'm a accounting YouTuber, so if you've seen my videos before, then you've seen my face before. Um, otherwise, you could always uh, you check, check, uh, check out my content in YouTube. I'm also the founder of a app called Right Tool for QuickBooks Online, which we are already enabling ChatGPT uh, type of uh, uh, functionality in it. It's not work, it's, it's in beta right now, but it's, it's very, very excited about that. And I'm also a mentor in Alt Accountant, which is um, a, coaching, it's a, a coaching program for accountants that wanna sort of take their practice at the next level, that sort of thing. Anyway, th my email is on the screen, and if there's anything I didn't cover today or something that wasn't clear, please email me and I'll do my best to get, to get back at you. So you know, there's my email and there's that. Now I wanna do a quick preface to this, okay? Well, number one, um, there's no uh, sponsor per se in this, in this particular webinar. And uh, because I strongly believe that uh, the AI and chat GPT is something that's gonna creep up <laughs> into our profession really fast. And it's really important for people to stay uh, educated on this stuff. So both um, myself and uh, CPA Academy accorded to, hey, we, we need to do some chat GPT content that's uh, purely for educational purposes. And I really hope you pay close attention to these things and also continue to pay attention to this. One thing I can tell you from spending so much time learning um, chat GPT in the past and other AI tools in the past three months, it is absolutely exhausting the amount of new information and the speed in which the information comes in. However, um, it's, it, is, it is important, it is crucial that you, that, you, um, that you stay informed about it, not just because you will be using AI and ChatGPT in your profession, but mostly because your clients, small business owners, are gonna be reading about this, are gonna be learning about this, and they're gonna be asking you about, you know, can AI do this so you don't have to do it anymore? Can AI do this? So your practice doesn't have to do anymore. So your firm doesn't have to do anymore. So there will be a entire skew of perception um, on the small business world in terms of what is the role of computer software automation AI and what's the role of the human being. And it's gonna drive, it could potentially drive bigger differences in opinion of your, your prices and the value of your services, especially if you continue to charge based on time because you will notice that the things that you will do in chat gpt are so fast i mean it just completely breaks the whole concept of the time that you spend doing your work the other important uh, concept i want to bring out is that there isn't a single one tool that i can tell you okay this is the ai tool that's going to transform and take your practice to the next level there's a bunch of scattered tools and we're starting to piece together you know, what these tools mean or how we can apply these tools in the real world. And this webinar is, is, is some insight about how we are, we are starting to piece this together and how accountants can start uh, leveraging this technology immediately. But, you know, what it looks like today and what it looks like in a couple of months, it might possibly be, you know, very different. So just keep that in mind. So table of contents. Uh, what is ChatGPT? We'll talk about that quickly. Other AI tools, just because it's now ChatGPT brought uh, light into the whole concept of all AI enabled tools. So there's other stuff other than ChatGPT that's uh, highly AI enabled and some of it uses ChatGPT in the back end. Then we're gonna do th three specific examples. Like I actually had like 20 examples to show you, but we only have an hour. So three specific examples. We're gonna talk about helping you categorize unknown transactions um, from, uh, from a, like a credit card or a bank or, or a bank uh, uh, statement. So we'll, we'll, we'll discuss how would that work and, and, and how effective that is. We'll talk about creating narratives and summaries, so turning numbers into words and what that looks like, and then potentially writing some notes or you know helping you write some notes for your reports. And then we're going to cover just a quick list of a whole, whole bunch of other practical uses, things that I'm doing now in my practice. Then I want to talk 
really briefly about how accountants can um, can uh, can think about what this could be working uh, with in the near future. How is this going to change your practice in the near future? Because again, we don't know what's going to look like in a couple of months at this point. And then we'll talk about some additional resources, YouTube videos, and things you can watch, and pretty much the next step. So let's jump right to it. Let's talk about what ChatGPT is or what GPT is. So GPT is an it's a artificial intelligence large language model, okay, LLM, large language model, and it's developed by a company called OpenAI. Um, fun fact: Elon Musk was one of the founders or one of the initial investors in OpenAI, and he pulled out a couple of years in because of differences in opinion with uh, Sam Altman. And, that, and now, um, you know, it's, it's interesting now Elon Musk is trying to figure out how to bring AI in, you know, through his current businesses, through Twitter, through, uh, through Tesla and that sort of thing. And there already is obviously AI built into self-driving vehicles with Tesla. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Okay, that's a fun fact. Um, it's a free tool to chat with. So there's a free tool that you can use, you can chat with. And there's an optional plus version that guarantees access when there's high volume. If you try to use ChatGPT in the past, you probably got the message that says, hey, we're in high volume. You can't use it right now. Come back in an hour. But the real game changer is the API. Okay, It's using the same technology to process information that's being worked on on a different application, a different software. So the, the, in a world where QuickBooks or FreshBooks or Xero or NetSuite uh, sends the information to uh, OpenAI, to, uh, to ChatGPT to process, and then it sends it back through the API and then shows up in the, in the software that the, the user, the accountant is working in real time. That's when you're going to start seeing the true manifestation of the power of this thing. For now, it's still a completely separate tool that you have to kind of like copy and paste back and forth it with. But anytime you hear of an app that has AI or it's enabled with AI, you're going to Probably, you could probably bet, bet that they're integrating with uh, ChatGPT. They're integrating with uh, OpenAI. Okay, so that's a, just a quick uh, thought about that. Now, there's other AI tools out there, and there's just so many of them. Uh, DALI, Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey. These, these three are the big ones when it comes to generating images. So if you actually start searching about this stuff, it's amazing how quickly this can, um, this can create an image out of nowhere. Uh, Microsoft Bing search is uh, sort of obviously Bing is a competition of Google and Microsoft did a big investment into OpenAI. So they enabled uh, the, the LLM from from ChatGPT is enabled into the Bing search. It's not a, it's not publicly available. It's uh, you have to sign up and they, they have to allow you to get in it. And if we have time, maybe I can open that and show you that. But that's something a different thing to look at, which is sort of tangential to ChatGPT. But it uses the, the web. Right where ChatGPT doesn't use the web, uh, ChatGPT uses the web up to 2000 and September 2001, and then um, Bing Microsoft Bing Search uses everything at this point all the way to real time data. There's also Fireflies. Fireflies will blow your mind. Basically, it's an app that uh, connects to your Zoom, and every time you have a Zoom call, it summarizes the entire conversation. It uh, it gives you statistics about who spoke for how long. Um, and it allows you to search through these transcripts. So if, like, imagine if last year all of your Zoom calls were recorded in Firefly. So you want to go back and figure out, you know, when did I talk about this particular tax code with who? And then you search through all your conversations from, from, that you made through Zoom, not, chat, not text conversation. We're talking about voice conversations. And you can search through that. There's also Descript, which has an incredible technology called a voice overdub, where you actually train it. You can actually, you, you, you talk to uh, the script for about an hour, you have to read some words, and then after it's trained it, you're gonna have an AI version of your voice, and then you're able to convert any text, uh, any text to voice, but using your voice, your tone of voice, your accent even, because I've done it. it, it has my accent too, which is also pretty interesting. Uh, there's also a chat PDF, which is really cool, and I think, this is the future here where you upload a PDF image to a ChatGPT like interface and then you can ask it questions only within that image. I mean, sorry, within that PDF. So instead of just searching the web for all sorts of, you know, random information that people put on the web or searching, you know, the, the, the entire database of human knowledge, 
it 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 lo lowers it and uh, simplifies it to just that PDF image. So imagine uploading um, the tax code in there, or uploading a, a new bill that the that the Senate uh, that the uh, Congress has passed, or uploading uh, maybe uh, some instructions to some tax form, and then only asking questions within the context of that. So that's going to be really powerful because in our world, uh, just recontextualizing or narrowing down the context is probably the most important thing than just having generic information. And there's also GPT for sheets. It's really cool. So it allows you to have to do prompts right inside the spreadsheet. So like the, all this stuff I want to cover, we, we don't have time to cover all this. We'll see if there's a, you know, if we do multiple parts of, of a series for that. And if they do, you'll see them on the, on the CPA Academy website. You will see part two, part three, and all, all that sort of stuff. But, uh, but at least this is to get your appetite wet on all the sort of possibilities of the things that you can do, okay? Now, let's, let's do some specific examples. We're going to call this categorizing expenses. So I'm going to X out of this, and I'm going to go into ChatGPT. Now, I'm going to run a quick polling question. I would just love to know how many of you or what percentage of you are essentially seeing ChatGPT for the first time. Um, so I would, would love to understand contextually because, uh, you know, if, if I can... Um, you know, if, it, if, if it's enough people, I'll do a quick demo, just like a, a quick, simple demo of like chat GPT so we can get a general idea just where we are. Do a quick, um, we'll do a quick demo on that. All right. So we are about a minute in. Um, I can't end the poll for some reason, uh, uh, Jason, or maybe can you try ending it? Does it let you end it? Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to, so. So let's start with just real basic what ChatGPT is. So I'm, I, I had a free account and at some point I got frustrated with uh, not being able to access it when, it was, when it's on high demand. So I'm paying the $20 a month. The, what my ChatGPT does versus what your free ChatGPT can do um, is the same thing. The results are going to be the exact same thing. The only difference is that because there's, there's millions and millions and millions of people using this, um, it's sometimes it's, they, they're at capacity. So by... Paying the 20 bucks a month, you get sort of guaranteed access to it. It's worth paying the 20 bucks a month. You know, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna spend the next couple of months just playing with it, um, uninterrupted by high demand, that's really worth it. Under model, there's essentially two models, GP, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. So for the public, the free version, you're only gonna have access to GPT 3.5, and the uh, plus users have access to GPT 4 in the next couple of weeks even, or, or months, they're gonna, that's gonna, GPT-4 will be available to everybody, and then maybe a GPT-5 or whatever will be the one that will be available only to, um, to, uh, to plus users. So I am a plus user, so I have access to both. Now, GPT-4 is the newer version of GPT, so it's actually apparently 100 times better, but we're gonna use 3.5, which is the one that everybody has access to, and we're gonna do simple things with it. Now, I do wanna show you here on the left-hand side of my screen, I wanna show you how much I've been using uh, chat GPT, you see all these things are open chats that I've had and I've deleted a, quite a few of them too. So we just go back and see how many, how much I have used it. Um, so just to show you, I've spent quite a bit of time with this, okay? So we're going to start with something simple like um, what are the top five business expenses for construction companies, okay? So I'm going to take, in, I'm going to copy and paste this question. And just contextually, I'm going to also search this in Google because it, it, prior to ChatGPT, the paradigm is if I have a question, I would, I would ask it into Google and then I would have to search through different potential websites to see. And, and then I would look at the, the source and I would see, okay, do I trust this? Do I not trust this? Or possibly I have to read you know, 10 different websites and then summarize you know, the results of 10 different websites into one. What ChatGPT has the power of doing is essentially that. It's just giving you one unified answer. So once I press enter, the thing just immediately starts typing for you. Now, very important, this is not copy and pasting from any specific website. This thing just, I typed it on the fly and it went uh, pretty deep into that. But then I can go one level deeper and I can say, well, labor costs. So I'm going to go, actually, let's do material costs. So I'm going to ask it, uh, what are the sub categories so we're going to do subcategories for uh, materials cost so then i'm going to basically I'm, I'm digging a little bit deeper and then it's telling you okay the subcategories are raw materials consumable 
fixtures and fittings, mechanical, electrical components, specialized materials, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to do uh, for specialized materials. So I'm going to put uh, four specialized materials. Can you give me the top five typical vendors we would use for this? And then press enter. And then this thing is actually going to give you um, you know, five vendors that are typically for that. So there's Home Depot uh, Pro, uh, Granger, there is Allied Building and Products, uh, uh, Fastenal, whatever that is, Sherwin Williams. So I'm going to grab this one, Allied Building Products, and then I'm going to say, how big is Allied Business Products? So no notice how basically I'm, I'm doing progressive sort of like, just like Google search on steroids. So, I, so I'm just going down you know, uh, just the rap going down the rabbit holes in here. Okay. And then I could ask something like, what is the average profit for this type of business? Okay. And then I press enter and then it's going to give you uh, some information. And then uh, it says here that approximately, according to SageWorks, approximately 6.6%. Now I guarantee you that if you are an avid Google searcher, you can in fact find all this information, but not at this speed, <laughs> not at this speed. I guarantee that, okay? Now, very important, very important, ChatGPT sometimes hallucinates, just like some random person in Twitter or Facebook can hallucinate. Like the, the, this has the capacity of being wrong, just like another human being could be wrong, or it could be just as wrong as the entire humanity could be wrong about a particular concept, right? This is trying to aggregate using artificial intelligence, trying to aggregate um, all the concept that, is, that, that has been trained on um, to then give you just simplified, easy to read information. So that's ChatGPT in a nutshell. It could do all sorts of things, but let's go back to the particular topic at hand, which is categorizing expenses. So then I'm going to say, um, help me. Actually, I'm going to start a new chat. And I'm going to say, and I'm actually going to give it a role. So I'm going to call it you are categorized, but I'm going to say you are categorized, but your job is to take a credit, credit card or bank charge description I will give you and you will tell me the payee name to the best of your abilities. Let's do, you will tell me uh, the cleaned up payee name to the best of your abilities, um, comma, tell me, tell me the expense category I should choose in my chart of accounts and tell me the rationale okay rationale okay um uh, use use uh, bullet points and tell me your percent of um what do you call it percent uh, percent of confidence Confidence. Okay, so I'm gonna press enter. So basically, I gave it a role. So I told it, okay, this is who you are, and that's called a prompt, and that's called prompt engineering. So prompt engineering, and the beauty of, of using ChatGPT, just like just like there's people that are really good Google searchers that they know how to search, um, and even if I type typos, it could it could it could understand contextually that I type typos. I mean, I did fix them as I go, but I'm a I'm a horrible typer, and I do typos all the time. Um, so, so I, I did that. And by the way, if you change that prompt slightly, your answers will be changed slightly. So that's a really important, uh, about it. But so, so I basically just said, told it, okay, this is what your role is. Then I'm going to grab, here's my, my, uh, my, uh, credit card statement. I'm going to grab something, some of the things that I might not know what they are. So I'm going to grab this thing here and press copy. And then I'm going to put here, paste it and I'm gonna put 133.72. So basically I'm just literally, just imagine I'm copying and pasting this from Excel. And, I, and again, I want you to also imagine, this is the biggest leap you need to make. 
I want you to also imagine that we're not doing this in a chat format in the future. I want you to imagine that there's an app, there's a software uh, app, uh, there's, a, there's a software app that, um, that will do this automatically as transactions come in into your accounting system. So I want you to picture that. I know that's the hardest leap to make because we're all accountants and we only think within the context of the accounting software that we're using. But I want you to see the, chat GP, the power of ChatGPT in chat format and then imagine what that will look like once it's implemented into our GL or, in our, or in our, uh, directly with our bank when we look at our banking online and that sort of thing. So I'm going to press enter, and then ChatGPT will proceed to give me what it is. So it says here, um, you know, pay name is Canaima Doral, expense category is travel lodging. Uh, it suggests that it's hotel and, uh, and expense. The word Doral indicates a location. The expense amount is the typical range of a hotel room rate. Uh, there before, I'm confident that this, uh, this is the charge, and my confidence interval is 90%. By the way, uh, just fun fact, that's a restaurant. <laughs> so, uh, so, no, I didn't get it right. But it's just a, you, get, you start getting an idea for, um, for the context. So I'm going so to tell it, so I'm going to tell it, um, note, if you see, you see TST or uh, what's the name of, uh, of or POS, um, it's probably a point of sale system, which is more typical of a uh, restaurant, okay? So basically, I can start now, I can start teaching it. So if you see TST or POS, it, it's a, a more typical a point of sale system or a typical restaurant, um, and then I can press enter, and basically I give it some new information, and now based on the new information with the new context, this actually went out there and realized there is a restaurant called Canaima Restaurant, and this is uh, Meals and Entertainment. I hear some additional um, explanations. So here, ex this expense is typical for a group of people, and therefore, you know, I have this level of confidence. So you can start seeing and understanding how this will work. And this particular chat, this uh, ca my categorized but chat, the one that I have open here, um, that will always stay open here. So you, you, the idea is that you never close this chat. Again, you never close this chat, and you always go back to it a month later, a week later, a year later. You always go back to it and just keep asking your questions, and, and you start refining little by little. Again, in, 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 the, in the real world, the best place to see this is, would be like inside of the accounting software. So like if you are in, let's say, in, uh, in, in bank, let's just go to... Uh, in banking, so if you happen to be in banking and then you see a transaction that came in through the banking, okay, uh, let's see if we can see one. Transaction that came into the banking, the idea is that yeah, QuickBooks might give you a category, but then it would be really cool if QuickBooks connected to, um, to ChatGPT and then gave you sort of their version of it. And this is kind of, one of some of the things that we're experimenting with our own app as well, okay? So this will give you a general idea of how the work will, maybe we'll do another example. So. Let me grab something else that might be uh, obscure here. Uh, like, let's see, something that might not be as obvious. So let's say, um, let's see this one, TST Vista, okay? So I'm gonna paste that in there and press enter. And then it says, travel and transportation uh, indicates a point of sale system, which is common for a transportation industry. So notice it starts using uh, additional context. So it's saying, even though I told it it's typical for restaurants, it's saying, hey, this is also typical for um, for a transportation industry. So again, and maybe use the word Vista. I'm not sure if it understood that Vista means, you know, a view or something in a different language. It's just really interesting how how, how ChatGPT uh, starts starts doing uh, this sort of thing. Okay. Um, let's see if I can, if there's another one I can grab. I'm going to grab uh, this one here. So this one is called uh, Pana New Latino Foo, okay? Like, I know what that is, but let's see if this thing can figure it out. So we'll just paste that in there and press enter, and then it says, okay, this one actually new, right? So it's, uh, it's Meals and Entertainment. The acronym TST is for Point of Sale System. The words New Latino Food suggests Latin American cuisine restaurant. Therefore, I'm confident that this charge is 90%, okay? And this is, this is the future of AI. The future of AI, I think, is... When a small business owner uh, doesn't have an accountant, 
and they have an, an AI-based accounting system and they plug all their bank transactions, uh, the accounting system is going to immediately generate a P&L and a balance sheet for the customers because it has the ability to do this. But then it will tell the customer, by the way, this might be 85% accurate or 90% accurate or, or, or something like that. Okay. Um, so something to, to just kind of uh, think about it. Now, there's genuine concerns about uploading, you know, uh, client data into ChatGPT because we don't know where this information goes. We don't know how the security work with this stuff. That stuff, um, you know, that stuff could happen. I mean, I, I completely understand and open to that. So I try to send um, limited data instead of sending, you know, specific data that identifies who the specific company is. Notice I just put um, a line on a on a credit card line. That's really not as as impactful. But now we're going to get into uh, potentially where it could get a little bit uh, uh, messier, but I'm going to show you uh, this in a different light. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper and say, now I am going to give you um, a bunch of transactions and I want this in a table format and uh, make it very precise um, and short. Uh, uh, let's do uh, three columns, or let's do four columns. So four, four columns. It's a uh, payee name. The other one is uh, category. The other one is uh, rationale and uh, confidence. Okay, and I'm just, I'll just fix the the spelling here, and then I'll press enter. So now I told it, okay, this is gonna it's gonna be a little bit different now. Okay, so now instead of just doing one by one, again, imagine you're at a point where you have already, you already did the homework and you're down to maybe, you know, a whole bunch of transactions. So we're gonna copy all the transactions. Actually, let me bring the dollar amounts to make it a little bit easier. So let's say we're down to all these transactions here and um, we'll bring, copy and paste that into, into this and then we'll press enter. So now ChatGPT will <laughs> build it into a table for you. Okay, so now again, we started with a single one and you saw all the bullet points, but what if I had a whole bunch to put together and it will it will do it for you now look at this this is beautiful it's beautiful beautiful great stuff okay it just does it for you and again the, the true amazement of this is how quickly how quickly it can do it okay all right let's run the second polling question really quick before we go to uh, the next topic here so we are halfway through the webinar there's only been one polling question this is polling question number two so polling question number two Perfect. Okay. Uh, yep. A polling question is still up. We're going to close it. Jason, I'll let you close it because it freezes on me. So uh, just pick the best one. Just one answer is good enough. Okay. All right. So the next, so the next natural question that an accountant would, would ask is, you know, this stuff is like in an ugly HTML table. Can I like put this back into Excel or something like that? So one of the really cool things about ChatGPT is that there's different formats that you can output the information. So I can say, uh, please set it up in CSV format, which I could just copy, paste, press enter. And watch this. It puts it on a table. It puts it on a table and it puts it on CSV format with, with the proper commas. So if I, need it, if I need to import this for whatever reason in some other system that requires in, in a CSV, um, I can do that, right? Um, and, and there it is. So I can just do copy code. I can go into my spreadsheet, paste it, and then I can you know, remove the commas or whatever, whatever happens. So that's, just, that's, that's the, the, the typical things that you... you uh, that you go through, and it could also do the opposite. It could just it could, it could clean data for you. So let's do that. So I'm gonna grab the same same thing that we have here. Okay. So I have a whole bunch of uh, payees, and let me just zoom in a little bit more so you can see it through the webinar format. And a lot of these things have extra numbers and extra uh, information that I might not need. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell it to clean up this entire uh, payee list for me. Okay, so I'm going to say, now I need you to just uh, 
clean up the pay list for me i want the company name only uh, let me put merchant name because that actually makes a lot more sense so i want the merchant name only uh get rid of unnecessary uh numbers unnecessary numbers and symbols and symbols and keep in mind that any data prior to the first asterisk is probably the payments platform info and not the payee name okay so i press enter and now it's look at this it's just cleaning up the pays for me okay it's, it got rid of all this extra information that i don't need right so just you know just to clarify prior to this these are the original pay names it had a bunch of numbers it had uh you know slashes it has uh stars it has characters so basically i told it do something else just you know have it just clean for me and then i can literally just click on copy code and then open up my my spreadsheet come into my spreadsheet software we'll make this a little bit bigger and just paste cleanly into it see that okay so for example for example think about this for a second okay so imagine and again i have to i have to put you in this mindset where you start thinking in the future and thinking what this would look like in the real world um so what if what if you had a whole year's worth of transactions so imagine you had a, a spreadsheet with a whole year's worth of transactions let's say there's a thousand lines of transactions okay and um, and you're going to enter 12 months worth of data and you want to import your pay list your your vendor list into 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 quickbooks or zero or whatever but you don't want to import it with all that extra code so imagine a world where before you start doing a one year's worth of data you come in there and you clean up the entire vendor list you import that into quickbooks now your quickbooks has a super clean uh pay list and then once you do the 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 bank feed is going to be much easier for it to categorize stuff. As a matter of fact, we can even we can even we have time. We can even we can actually showcase that specific thing uh, right now. So this should be pretty exciting. Actually, I'll, I'd like to ask you. Put it in the chat. Would this be a good example? Uh, uh, would this be a, an interesting example to use? Okay. So let's do that. So let's do a new. I'm going to do a brand new one. Okay. You are uh pay clean up but okay your job is to to take my uh my list of descriptions from my banks or credit cards and clean up the pay names i only want uh, merchant name and no additional text or numbers. I am going to import this into QuickBooks. Okay, again, you, that last part you don't really have to say, but let's just say it anyway. So I press enter, and there you go. Yeah, uh, there's cleanup, but at your service. Okay, all right, so now let's open up that, that same spreadsheet. Okay. Open the space page, and I'm going to grab that entire pay list. And just to sort of, I'm going to also make its life a little easier. Um, and I'm just going to remove the duplicates just for the sake of uh, speed here. So I'm going to, I'm going to remove the duplicates prior, although this thing can remove the duplicates for you. So like, you know, so maybe I should have demoed that, but let's take that pay list here. And let's copy that and let's paste this here and this will go back and give me a clean pay list okay look at that it's a beautiful thing beautiful pay list okay and then i'm going to say okay it, it, it keeps going here it keeps going beautiful okay uh, then i'm going to say um again but remove duplicates and uh, in a csv format enter okay there we go 
Okay. And I'm going to actually uh, not CSV format. Say not CSV format, just um, table for EC copy paste. Okay, yeah, that's better. Okay, that's better. So then I'm going to take this entire uh, table here all the way uh, till the end. Let's go all the way down till the end here. I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to go into, just imagine a brand new spreadsheet. So I'm going to go into a new spreadsheet, and I'm going to paste that in here. Then I'm going to save this one clean payee spreadsheet, and I'm going to put this in, uh, let's say, uh, vendor list. Okay, so I saved that. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into QuickBooks, and I'm going to go into gear menu and click on import data. And again, if you're not a QuickBooks user, if you're some other accounting software user just imagine this in zero or freshbooks or netsuite or whatever then i'm going to upload my vendor list and then click next next import okay so that imported 90 vendors again that was only like a month's worth of transactions so if you had a year's worth of transactions obviously it would be it would be different okay then i'm going to go let's go into banking Okay, and let's upload. So imagine you're connecting. Imagine you're connecting it to the bank, but just we'll we'll, we'll go this route. And then I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna import this. Just give me one second. Okay. Um, Okay, so select files. Okay, and again, imagine I connected directly to the bank or I downloaded it from the bank. It really doesn't matter as long as you have the connection set up uh, and then I will create a new account here. And uh, we'll do, let's do a credit card. Okay, and continue. And then continue. There's all my transactions. Again, this is a standard QuickBooks functionality. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to emulate, okay, what happens after you um, connect your bank or upload your banking file, but you have a clean vendor list. So what's going to end up happening is, is this thing is going to start catching some of them. Again, QuickBooks doesn't talk to ChatGPT, but notice that prior to, to importing your vendor list, you would be sitting there and you would be creating uh, each of your vendors. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but look, it grabbed about half of them, <laughs> okay? And I haven't even, haven't trained QBO to catch um, the pay names yet, okay? So this is only with that. So if, as this thing gets better and, and more refined, there will be a point, there will be a point in time where, you know, this thing will be like 95% there, okay? So that's just like, a, just a really a clean example. So that for a lot of these things, I didn't even have to uh, enter the vendor's name. Now on this one, let's see. Okay, actually the reason for that is because this stopped at Starbucks. And so let me put here, uh, keep going. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I guess it had stopped at the end. So I didn't catch some of them, okay. Or, or do the rest. Okay, I'm not sure, I think it got confused. So I'm gonna go find I'm going to go find my Starbucks here. Okay. So yeah, so there was a whole bunch missing. Okay. So you only did, you only did a few. So let's do the rest. Let's do the rest. So uh, do these. Okay. So there's the new ones. So I'm also going to copy and paste these into, um, into a spreadsheet and import them into QuickBooks. That's why I didn't catch uh, most of them. So let's go back and do the rest of them. Okay, we'll save this as my pay name, a vendor list. Yeah, replace. 
go back into QuickBooks, import some more vendors. Browse vendor list. So it'll be the balance of the vendors that were there. Mm, was that the rest of them? I wonder if I had fully saved it. Give me a second. Yeah, let me load it again. I hadn't, I didn't fu fully saved it. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we're gonna finish importing the other the other 50. So 34 out of them were imported. Some of them were duplicates. That's okay. So I go back into my bank feeds uh, one more time, and it should now catch more. So there's like so it cut it cut, cut target now. So I cut a couple more in the process because it had imported uh, more of the vendors. And the rest of them, like this one should be there. Should have picked up Uber in my opinion, but um, we, we could just select it in there. But I didn't have to create the new vendor uh, on it. But uh, when, once these things start getting categorized, then possibly the pay, the, the, um, the, the categories could be better or it could not. I mean, we don't even want to discuss you know, whether or not we trust uh, QuickBooks thing. And then not all of them are cleaned up. Like for example, in the, in the first instructions, I told it to, I explicitly told it to clean up the, anything uh, with an asterisk and prior to that. Um, but on the second set of instructions, I didn't. So just a good, you know, good catch. If you, if you notice that none of them are a hundred percent cleaned up and that's, and, and that, that all, it all, all is going to boil to uh, prompt engineering. I mean, for the most part, they're cleaned up. I think this is the only one that uh, wasn't cleaned up. You know, I could maybe if I would have told it to, you know, to get rid of anything with the with the first asterisk, it could do that. Again, it's all gonna fall back into prompt engineering. What you tell what you tell ChatGPT to do is gonna have a direct impact on the results that it's gonna give you. All right. Okay, cool, neat. Okay, let's go to the next topic. I hope that was, uh, that was useful. You know, the whole concept of uh, payees and categorization uh, uh, personally fascinates me. Um, I have already, like, during this particular tax season, I actually did a couple of cleanups where I, you know, I had ChatGPT do the entire <coughs> vendor cleanup for me. And it did save me, I don't know, maybe an hour per customer or two hours per customer. I mean, it, you start, you're starting to see it. And this is only the very, very uh, first. This is the very, very first iteration of accountants even using this tool. So you can imagine this thing within the next couple of months, it's just going to be absolutely mind blowing. Um, next one is narratives and summaries. This is gonna be cool. It's gonna be an interesting one. I think you're gonna like it. So let's imagine I pulled up a profit and loss report in, um, in QuickBooks. So let's do profit and loss report or in any accounting software for that matter, okay? So let's do all of last year, run report, and there's my profit and loss report, okay? I'm gonna take this report and I'm gonna export it into Excel. I know some of you already are thinking, okay, I think I know where you're going with this. And some of you are you know, probably thinking, what the heck are you doing with this? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take, I'm not even gonna put the company name uh, in ChatGPT. I'm just gonna take sort of the, met the metadata here, the, the actual, um, numbers but i don't have any like sort of company name so i'm not like exposing any client information or anything like that okay and then i'm going to come in here and go into chat gpt and i'm going to go to new chat and i'm going to say i need you to analyze this profit and loss report for last year and give the business owner a narrative about what happened in their business. Uh, keep in mind the business owner is a total layman and a number phobic. Um, yeah, I spelled that correctly and I press enter. Okay. So there's the prompt. Okay. And so I, now I'm going to actually paste the PNL. So I'm literally taking the PNL from, from QuickBooks or whatever, and I'm pasting it in here and then pressing enter. And guess what this thing is going to do. Okay. Watch this. So the profit and loss report shows the financial performance of the business for the period in review, blah, blah, blah. 
The income on this action contains, you know, it's 755000 which derived from the sale of construction services. Cost of goods sold shows it's 569000 which includes job-related expenses and job labor costs. After deducting costs, uh, you get a gross profit of 186000 uh, The expense section shows that the business incurred total of et cetera, et cetera. Here are some uh, um, examples of the expenses, some other information. Okay, and then I'm going to say... Um, what I'm gonna put what were the top expenses and maybe some um uh suggestions on how to uh reduce them, something like that. And there we go. So he's telling you, okay, your top expenses are payroll, and then here's some um some ways you can reduce payroll expenses. The next one is rent, and then uh, some ways you can reduce rent expense, and then current truck and then some ways you can reduce uh, current truck okay so again you 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 can use this um, you, you want to send somebody a profit and loss on a balance sheet and send them an email this could be sort of a template I mean there's just a lot of great things you can do with this right, I'm gonna show you one more example but prior to that I'm gonna do um, uh, one more polling question okay so polling question number three and then we'll do uh, polling question number four right at the end of the hour because uh, I have one more thing to show you um, before we wrap up. Exactly. Now, check this out. Uh, actually, can we share the results of that one? There you go. Okay. So 49% of you are excited and plan to implement it in your practice. 18% of you are skeptical about the usefulness uh, and, and have security concerns. Yeah, I agree with you. 6% uh, are scared about how the profession is going to be impacted negatively. 9% is going to wait to see what other people do, and 18% don't know what to think yet. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so let me show you something which is, it, it might possibly um, yeah, yeah, uh, can expand you know, how useful this could be. How about this? In Spanish. So the exact same thing, <laughs> right? I just changed the language, and there's the exact explanation uh, in Spanish. Okay, so it could just it could do uh, many many languages. Okay, how about this? Um, in a, a shorter format, but as a poem. And now, yeah, I know we're getting a little bit just sort of way off here, tangent. But just so you can start like thinking just abstractly on um, uh, on on like how this stuff could work. Um, and, and then basically the same explanation about the profit and loss, the cost of goods sold, the expenses now as a, as a poem. And it, it rhymes for the most part, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Okay. So again, um, a lot of stuff happening. Okay. A lot of stuff happening, a lot of capabilities all built into one. The key to this, the key to this, and this is going to be the key to dealing with ChatGPT and AI moving forward. You have got to break the paradigm you got to break the paradigm about your world being debits credits numbers reconciliations you got to break the paradigm and now we have to think in language we have to think in in conversation because through you know through uh the way we interact with these ai tools is totally um it's, it's totally um uh through conversation so watch Let's do this next one. Let's do report notes. In 4,000 characters or less, please give me highlights from this balance sheet report. So check this out. So let's say, for example, I'm looking at this profit and loss report here, and I want to add a note here in the bottom, so I want to include it in the same PDF as the report. So when I go to add notes, it's just a little thing here that says 4,000 characters max. QuickBooks Online happens to limit the notes to 4,000 characters. A different, uh, a different accountant, a different, I mean, sorry, a different accounting software might have a different type of limit. So I can go back and do a similar prompt. Uh, let's go back here and say, uh, let's do a new one. Um, please give me a summary of this uh, profit and loss I am going to give you, including the numbers that uh, highlight that um that uh, that are highlights and top uh, three tips on how to improve them okay all under or under let's say 3900 characters okay 
So I, I did that, and then I'm going to come in and uh, copy and paste that profit and loss. Okay, like it starts with, um, with its own sort of sample, but now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste my own profit and loss, uh, press enter, and then I'm going to take the actual summary that ChatGPT is giving me. This is where I want you to think, how would our life and our, 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 our relationship with our clients completely change if instead of delivering a P&L and a balance sheet uh, by itself, we uh, have a P&L balance sheet that looks like this. Think about that, okay? Let me print this in PDF and just completely change your paradigm about how we present financial statements. So in the past, we only give a P&L and that's it, but now we give a P&L and a quick narrative explanation of what they're looking at in their numbers. And again, you, you don't have to copy and paste straight from ChatGPT. You can edit this, okay? You don't have to like be worried about what it's going to say or the random things that, that it could potentially say. But I guarantee you that after you start doing this, you will see that 90% 90 90 of the leg work uh, will, be, will be done for you, okay? All right, so, so, in, so that, that, one, that one in particular is the one that you're probably going to have the most fun with uh, when you start pull, pulling up P&Ls and balance sheets from your accounting software and testing ChatGPT to see what kind of summaries um, it could give you, okay? So again, I want, there's so many other things I would like to sh show you, but I wanted to just start with like sort of the most basic stuff. Like I'm, I'm trying to connect you, the accounting community, with this world, and I'm trying to use sort of the most tangible terms you can, you, you can think of, but I do, I, do, I, I do so many things with it, it would really make your head spin. Like I use it to write code uh, in something that's, that's called bookmarklet format, so I can run scripts inside my browser in any website. Um, I use it to write Excel macros and clean up data for me. I use it to write engagement letters, contracts, and agreements. I use it to brainstorm for a new client prep call, for interview, like a brand new client that I, I don't know about the industry. I could, I could go back and forth with ChatGPT. I use it to write job descriptions for job postings. I use it to write interview plans for that job posting and what questions I'm going to ask. That employee used it to write, uh, help me write content and stuff like that. And believe it or not, some of the content from this, uh, from this uh, webinar, I use ChatGPT to help me put together. So kind of meta concept. Um, what we could be doing in the future, I think the, the concept of building a library of all the information that you have about your practice, about your business, and having a quick place for like sort of a brand new employee to search for procedures and how-tos is going to be a game changer. Having like an accountant bot within the context of what you know and understand that can answer your customers' questions, maybe via email or maybe a chat bot or maybe even with your emulated voice. Who knows where this is going to take us? It's just going to be very interesting. From additional resources, check out my YouTube playlist on ChatGPT. I've done about six videos at this point, and I have a two-hour podcast uh, where I talk to you know, some of my friends about where I think this is heading. You definitely want to check out FutureTools.io. It's a, basically a database of all the AI tools that are coming out. The website is absolutely incredible. Uh, Jason Stats, it's another CPA that's creating really, really great content on just sort of the philosophy of where we're going with uh, AI in the accounting profession, and you want to check out his YouTube channel. And next steps, you know, create a free ChatGPT account, start playing with it. If you have to pay the 20 bucks, you'll go ahead and do it. Um, the other brain next step would be brainstorm and share your experiences uh, with AI, with colleagues and clients. You'll be blown away of the things that you will discover along the way. There is my email. If you have any questions, I'll do my best. I have, there's thousands and thousands of people interested in ChatGPT content. I can only do so much. Um, I don't have any, like, anything to sell. I don't have any courses. I don't have anything. I, I'm, I'm learning how to use this just as you're learning how to use this, and I'm trying to bring this information out into the world as much as possible you know, to my friends and colleagues to make sure that we are ready for whatever yeah. is coming. Polling question number four, I launched it. 